All right, our thanks for Tommy Tran for getting us ready here. We've got Matt Norlander, host of the Ion College Basketball Podcast, and I've got his bracket right in front of me. Matt, you ready to go through this thing? Um, you, you did make a change last night, correct? And, and do you still hold out that you can make a change even into tomorrow, or is this it? It's it. I think the change you're referring to might have to do with some bunnies over there. We did the Ion College Basketball Podcast on Wednesday morning. Uh, we went through our all of our picks. My picks, I believe, are final. We actually do have one personnel update in one of these games here that might cause me to change it. It literally happened in the past hour, so we'll get to that when we get to that game. But I think for the most part, I think we're good. Which game is that? So I make sure to stop on that so you can tell us why. It is the Michigan-Colorado State game. Michigan-Colorado we'll State. Thursday. All right, first game of the tournament. I'll be sure to stop there. Let's start in the West and run through Matt Norlander's bracket here. Gonzaga, number one seed in that region and the number one overall seed in the tournament. Gonzaga moving on past Georgia State. Georgia State, by the way, I, th I think a lot of college basketball fans would agree they should be seeded higher than 16. Uh, Boise State against Memphis. It's Boise State moving on the eight seed over Penny Hardaway's team, moving down to the uh, four and five games, and that's five seed Connecticut past New Mexico State, but it's the 13 over the four, Matt. Catamounts over the Hogs. Yeah, I don't, what would you say to that? I mean, I'm gonna take Vermont to beat Arkansas and what I think will be one of the best first round games. Uh, this is, as I noted on the Ion College Basketball Podcast, this UConn-Vermont game is the Matt Norlander special. I grew up in Vermont. I lived in Connecticut for 20 years, so I'm loving the Northeast flavor there, and that should be uh, terrific. I think this grouping right here, though, this TNT set on Thursday night, that might be the best combined 5, 12, 4, 13, best potential for both games to be really, really close late of any other spot in the bracket. Yeah, I love it. New Mexico State, the winners of the WAC, as they normally are. Let's move down to Alabama facing the winner of tonight's game between Rutgers and Notre Dame. You have Alabama advancing there and Texas Tech getting past Montana State. Now down to the Coach K portion of the bracket. Tom Izzo is there as well, and it's Tom Izzo beating Bob McKillop's Davidson Wildcats and Duke getting past Cal State Fullerton. Those are Friday night games. So into the second round here of the West region in Matt Norlander's bracket, Gonzaga beating Boise State. Does Vermont keep it going, Matt? It does not. I initially did have Vermont moving to the Sweet 16 after further consideration. I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with UConn to get out of this satellite region to move into San Francisco. Huskies versus Bulldogs, uh, a great canine matchup there, and what could be a fantastic. Uh, I will be out there for that game if indeed Duke does move on to San Francisco, as I will be following Mike Krzyzewski on his farewell tour for CBS Sports. All right, let's move down to the uh, Duke portion of the bracket then. Alabama against Texas Tech, and it's the six seed tide advancing past Texas Tech. Well, Duke and Coach K get past Tom Izzo. So we go to San Francisco now and the Sweet 16. Matt Norlander will be there if Duke does indeed advance. Gonzaga past Connecticut. Does Coach K keep it going against Bama? He does. I'm going to have Duke moving along. Now, Alabama won real quick. That's a that's good value on Bama. A lot of people are going to fade that, but this is the best of what's around in terms of what we're getting for any kind of Elite Eight matchup. There, you could not ask for a more highly anticipated, better potential star power kind of game before we get to the final four hassles than this these teams met the day after thanksgiving it was maybe the best game of the regular season men's college basketball this season duke won that game mark williams was awesome drew timmy and chet holmgren were pretty good but uh i think if they meet this time around it could be even better in terms of on the floor and maybe the result won't be the same and you do have gonzaga advancing to the final four out of the west region so the number one overall seed into the final four let's go down to the east region in matt norlander's final bracket he has refined it and baylor the defending champions taking on norfolk state uh, uh, many of our experts picking Baylor to lose, not in the first round, maybe not even in the second round, but to lose before the Final Four in Elite Eight. North Carolina losing to Marquette, according to Matt Norlander. The Golden Eagles onto the second round to face Baylor. Let's go down to a matchup that we now know is going to happen with Indiana winning last night, facing St. Mary's. And Matt, you got the Hoosiers here. I do have the Hoosiers moving along. Yes, I think that after how they played on Tuesday night, uh, St. Mary's will have sat for a while here. 
uh, having played uh, last week in the WCC title game and then getting as long of wait as almost anyone in the tournament. There's a few teams that have waited longer, like San Francisco and Murray State. Oh, by the way, we'll get to them in a second. But I will take the Hoosiers with Trace Jackson Davis. He'll be the best player on the floor to move along. And then, yes, I'll take UCLA over Akron. And uh, what I don't think will be too, too close there. And in getting that second round matchup, oh, by the way, you happen to have two of the you know six or seven proudest programs in the history of men's college basketball. Blue Bloods. And down to Texas and Virginia Tech. Now in Milwaukee, this has been a, a sexy computer pick. Our computers love Virginia Tech to not, not only win that game, but to make a run in this tournament. Matt, you like Virginia Tech as well. Yeah, I'm going to be swayed by what I saw in person in Brooklyn, Chris. Uh, Virginia Tech is playing very well. And I just think as a collective unit, Virginia Tech's more reliable than Texas. This is a very close line. Texas has the experience, the size, the veteran play to actually get past Virginia Tech in this spot. I, I completely get that. But this is a tasty 11 over 6 matchup. And yeah, uh, I'm, I don't think Texas will do it laying down. But uh, but I do think that Virginia Tech's going to win that one. And then Purdue over Yale, I don't think that one's going to be too, too close overall. Purdue's got a warehouse worth of offensive talent there. And I think that they're going to move along. And that'll give us really another great second round matchup on Sunday. And uh, Matt has said that this Murray State-San Francisco game, the 7-10 game, might be the best first round game of all. He's got Murray State advancing past the Dons of San Francisco and Kentucky uh, moving on to the second round past St. Peter's. Easy to forget, Kentucky only won nine games last season, the worst season in program history. But they are back with the likely player of the year, Oscar Shibwe. Let's go to the second round now. Matt Norlander's East region, the Baylor Bears moving past Marquette into the Sweet 16 and Philadelphia in the matchup of Blue Bloods. It's UCLA making another tournament run here, according to Matt Norlander. They made the final four last season. They're a four seed this season, and they are moving past Indiana to take on Baylor. Now, down to the bottom part of the bracket, it's Purdue over Virginia Tech. And Matt, Murray State, I'm not sure a lot of people know this, Murray State is in Kentucky. It's Murray, Kentucky. It's Lexington, Kentucky. What would a win for Murray State mean to the folks in Murray? It would mean they won't have their current coach anymore for sure. <laughs> Matt McMahon's already a candidate for uh, some bigger jobs here, and I guarantee you Murray State beats Kentucky. Matt McMahon is going to be coaching at a bigger program there. It would be everything. Kentucky doesn't schedule Murray State. These teams never play anymore because it benefits Kentucky in no way to schedule Murray State. I get all that. But I, uh, I don't have any rhyme or reason for this other than there are a couple of players on this roster with Murray State who are on the team with John ja Morant that beat Marquette a few years ago in the NCAA tournament. Great experience. You're 30 and two. You're rated well in predictive metrics. So overall, I don't know how Murray State's going to be able to handle Oscar Shibwe. I'm just going to, you got to take a couple chances here in your bracket. I will have a little bit of fun. And by the way, this isn't some huge upset. Murray, a seven seed, rightfully so. And get him into, uh, get him up to Philly. Racers, <laughs> racing into the second week. Amanda loves it. And uh, we, we've seen a lot of those kind of small school upsets over the big school in state lately. Abilene Christian over Texas last season. Loyola Chicago over Illinois. Wichita State over Kansas. So here's the Sweet 16. Baylor and UCLA. And, and you have the Bruins over the defending champs. Yeah, only because uh, I actually think both these teams are a little bit banged up. Um, and I don't know how much longer Baylor can sustain a run without LJ Cryer. He might play. He might not play. He's got a lingering foot issue here. I don't know if that's ever going to be resolved. It limits Baylor to a certain extent. Scott Drew deserves strong consideration for National Coach of the Year for getting Baylor to a one seed again, despite having plenty of, of injury and attrition issues. So, yeah, I will take UCLA because I think it has more talent overall. And physically, it might be in a better spot by the time we get there. And then Purdue to end the run for Murray State. UCLA taking on Purdue. And if I remember correctly, Matt, you had Purdue as your champion before the season, right? I did. I picked Purdue back in the preseason to win the national championship, so I will stick with the Boilermakers here. I will have Purdue beating UCLA a three over a four because Purdue's offensive arsenal is much better than what UCLA can provide there. They've got big bodies, and I don't know if they'd have an answer for Zach Eady down low. Give me the Boilers in the final four. Okay, Purdue into the final four along with Gonzaga. Let's pick the south region now in Matt Norlander's bracket. Arizona is the one seed. Arizona will face the winner of tonight's game between Wright State and Bryant. Wildcats advancing there. TCU getting past Seton Hall. Let's move down now to the, the four and five quadrants here. Houston is the five against Conference USA champion UAB. The Cougars moving past the Blazers. Illinois past Chattanooga. And now let's get to that Colorado State-Michigan game, Matt. 
Michigan the favorite despite being the 11 seed. Where are you going here? Oh, yeah, so keep an eye on this line, though, because it was announced earlier uh, today on, on Wednesday that Devontae Jones, the, the critical point guard, he did not travel to, to this site. He's, got, he's in concussion protocol, and that is significant. Uh, I have Michigan winning in this game, and as we do this here now, I'll keep Michigan. But no Devontae Jones is, is a significant development for a Michigan team that I think is actually fortunate that it didn't even get sent to Dayton. Colorado State's really, really good. It had its own travel schedules. I reported on it earlier in the week for CBS Sports. I'll stick with Michigan there, but keep an eye on that. That line, I would think, is actually going to move as we get closer to Thursday's tip. Okay, and then Michigan moving on to face Tennessee, and uh, that's, that's Michigan for now, Matt Norlander says. There's a chance he could change that pick, but Michigan-Tennessee there. Down to the bottom now of the South region, Ohio State past the fighting sister genes of Loyola Chicago and Villanova over Delaware. So let's pick the second round games now in the South region. Arizona, TCU, Matt Norlander likes the Wildcats to advance once again. And Illinois past UAB. Illinois, UAB. I think I had you picking Houston there, so I want to I want to circle back on that. Matt, you like the Blazers to, to knock off the Cougars? That is correct. I like UAB to beat the Cougars. Andy Kennedy has one of the best teams in transition this season. This was one of my toughest games. When Selection Sunday came and Tom Brady tried to ruin my entire day, in the heat of the moment, I took Houston, but I have since reevaluated, and I am correctly taking UAB in that spot. And then Illinois to move along. Arizona and Illinois have a fun history, including this season. Illinois... Uh, hosted Arizona and lost in Champaign. So that could be a fantastic regional semifinal there in San Antonio. Yeah, and a rematch of a tournament game that was one of the best in history, at least if you're an Illinois fan, a great comeback. Uh, Michigan and Tennessee, it's Tennessee advancing along with Ohio State to the Sweet 16 in San Antonio, Texas in the South region. So let's go to that Arizona-Illinois game. Who wins the rematch? I'm taking Illinois. Listen, Arizona is the tallest team. It's the least experienced team. First year head coaches in power conferences aren't usually getting to the final four. Not to say Tommy Lloyd can't do it. We don't know really how reliable Kirk Creasa will be with that ankle. Uh, who even knows if he'll play this weekend? He's going to try and give it a go. I'm going to rely on an Illinois team that from a roster standpoint, hassle has one of the 10 to 12 best in the country. It's been a little bit up and down, but it's gotten some big wins. And I think it avenges its loss. And it moves along because Kofi Coburn will be the difference maker here. Great big man battle in that game, though. Christian Coloco, one of the best defenders in the country for Arizona. And you have Tennessee beating Ohio State. How about Illinois against Tennessee? Oh, man. See, we've got a couple, three, four matchups in my regional finals here. I'm going to go with Illinois to overcome Tennessee. Battle of the Oranges there. But I will ride the Fighting Illini to avenge their second-round loss a year ago. Break on through to make the Final Four for the first time since 2005. Thanks in part to Alfonso Plummer shooting. He's, one, he's a top 10 shooter in the country. They have Kofi Coburn, a top five player arguably in the country, and they have Trent Frazier, a top 10 defender in the country. I'm going to rely on those guys to get Illinois out of this region and into New Orleans marching along. All right, Illinois a four seed into Matt Norlander's final four. So it's a four Illinois, a three Purdue, and a one Gonzaga. Let's pick Kansas's region now. Jayhawks are the one seed. This might be the most gettable region, the most vulnerable region. The Jayhawks uh, getting past Texas Southern, who won last night. Third time in four years, Texas Southern has won a first four game. And then it is San Diego State past Creighton in the 8-9 game. Let's go down to the 4-5 quadrant here. And this might be um, this might be one of those where I, you know Iowa is looked at as, as the best team in this quadrant right now with Providence struggles. Iowa getting past Richmond. But South Dakota State is only uh, a two-point underdog against four-seed Providence. Who do you like? I like South Dakota State. This is a quote literally from Wednesday from Ed Cooley, though. He says, quote, I don't think there's a person in America who has given us a chance to win this game tomorrow, end quote. Ed, you're the four seed. <laughs> no, there are more people picking Providence in South Dakota State. With that being said, this is the most popular upset pick. I switched it. I'm going Jackrabbits. They're the best three-point shooting team in the bracket. I think they're a bad matchup for Providence, and they're the best three-point shooting team in many years in men's Division I college basketball. Providence has not fared well this season at all when its opponents have been above 38% from the three-point line. South Dakota State is highly likely to do that, so I will take them. Ed Cooley, never change. He He's right, but he's wrong at the same point. Plenty of people will pick Providence. I will not. Yeah, it's like when Nick Saban tries to convince everybody that Alabama is the underdog in the college football playoff. Let's go down to the bottom part of the region now. Six seed LSU without 
a head coach now, Will Wade, gone. Iowa State went from two wins to 20 wins this season. It's LSU advancing past Iowa State and Wisconsin knocking off Colgate in a virtual home game in Milwaukee. Now, USC and Miami. This is a tough 7-10 game to pick. USC is the pick from Matt Norlander. Auburn getting past Jacksonville State. So we're into the second round here in our final region in Matt Norlander's bracket, the Midwest region. Kansas and San Diego State in Fort Worth. Kansas winning, but Matt, who are they going to play? Almost every single year since the bracket has expanded in 1985, with one or two exceptions, there's at least one double-digit seed that makes the Sweet 16. If you are filling out your bracket, you need to find a way somehow, at least one, often two, if not three, like last year, I will take the Jackrabbits to beat Iowa hmm. and move along into the Sweet 16 in Chicago. This team is legitimately good. I am banking on the hot underdog to live up to the expectation. That often does not happen. It's usually someone off the radar hassle that does it in terms of an underdog or a double digit seed. South Dakota State's very trendy. I can't fade this team. It's way too good of a shooting team. As one coach told me, Baylor Shireman is the Summit League version of Larry Bird, and he's going to show up big in this tournament. Matt Norlander, one of the few not buying in to the hot Iowa Hawkeyes, <laughs> though he does have them winning that opening round game. All right, let's move down and see who Kansas will face off against. Kansas and uh, uh, South Dakota State. I guess I shouldn't just assume Kansas is going to move on. Uh, LSU and Wisconsin, it's the Badgers moving on there. And Auburn getting past USC as we fill out the bracket in Chicago. Sweet 16, Kansas and South Dakota State. And it is Kansas winning there and Auburn beating Wisconsin. So it's a matchup between the one and the two here for the right to go to the final four. I got to be honest. I thought Amanda was taking the segment over as soon as I picked Iowa to lose. But happy she to still oh, have he, you, Hassel. He, he, he was this very is... upset behind the scenes. I can, I can only imagine that one shoe has already been taken off and thrown across the office at this point. So I will go Kansas at Aub against Auburn in Chicago. The one, two here, as I wrote for CBSSports.com, as I've said on the Ion College Basketball Podcast, Kansas to me has the weakest region. It is the most vulnerable spot, uh, uh, least vulnerable spot, excuse me, to get to New Orleans. I will take the Jayhawks here. Ochai Abaji is a first-team All-American level kind of player. And then Auburn feels actually like a pretty good uh, pick to make it to at least the Sweet 16. Yes, the Tigers have been bumpy, but I'm going to trust that talent. Be Walker Kessler, best defender in America. Jabari Smith might be the number one overall pick. Give me the top two seeds to chalk it up into the regional final. And then Kansas will move along to New Orleans where they played in the Final Four 10 years ago. I saw that in person. Kansas made the Final Four, and there you have it. Back to you, Hassel. Yeah, well, this is your bracket, Matt, so why don't you just take us through your semifinals and then championship? Of course, why not? So I will go uh, Gonzaga-Purdue. I will have Gonzaga beating Purdue. That is a phenomenal potential Final Four matchup from an offensive standpoint. Fireworks game could be decided in the 90s if those teams wanted. So I will have Gonzaga move along. And then I will take, that's the Bill Self special, Kansas, Illinois. He was uh, the coach of the Illini before he took the KU job almost two decades ago. I will have Gonzaga against Kansas in the national championship game on this Wednesday as we head into the NCAA tournament. And yes, I will take Gonzaga to win it all. And the reason why I'm taking Gonzaga to win it all is this. Gonzaga this season is not as good as it was last season. It's slightly less, but it's still the best team relative to the field. This guy right here, Nobody like Chet Holmgren in the sport. He has changed Gonzaga's defensive identity. This is Gonzaga's, I don't hear anybody talking about this. This is Gonzaga's best defensive team since the group that made the title game and almost beat Carolina in 2017. This group is so much better on that end of the floor this season than it was last season. Drew Timmy and Chet Holmgren are two of the top 10 players in the country. There's no other team that can say they've got two of the 10 best in the sport. I will bank on the number one team and the predictive metrics that's been there for the majority of the season to atone for the loss to Baylor last year. And while it's a different kind of redemption story, we got this with Virginia, Chris. UMBC loss, comes back, wins the national championship. Gonzaga, one win away from an undefeated season, heartbreaking loss, it comes back, it wins a title, and shuts up the doubters forever. I have the exact same Final Four championship and champion as you. And uh, I'm pretty proud of that because I think uh, you're, you know you're what? one of the foremost minds in college basketball. You said you have the exact same four mm -hmm. as me? 
Amanda, can we do this whole segment over again then, please? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, but still pick South Dakota State to beat Iowa. Yeah, well, I mean, I've got Iowa losing in the Sweet 16 anyway, so I don't have them going that far. Matt Norlander with us uh, here on CBS Sports HQ with his bracket, which uh, did change from yesterday, but not sure it's going to change over the next 20 hours or so when we get the round of 64 tipping off. Eye on College Basketball Podcast is where you can hear Matt Norlander and Gary Parrish. They have uh, complete breakdowns of every single region, and they also have a mega women's tournament preview as well. Check it out. Coming up next, we're going to try to make you some money on the tournament. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.